I'm just going to barely get the hang of this, and then we're going to stop doing it. <laughs> okay, it is six o'clock, and at this point, I will call the City of Menasha Common Council meeting to order. <clears throat> if we could start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Alderman Taylor. Mayor, I'd like at this time, I would like to uh, take a moment of silence. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, more than 100,000 Americans have lost their lives. And I also would like to recognize all the essential workers for doing their job. Thank you. At this point, could we have the roll, please? Alderman Sevenick. Here. Alderman Langdon? Here. Alderman Schmidt? Here. Alderman Tom Grady? Here. Alderman Ted Grady? Here. Alderman Ropella? Here. Alderman Nichols? Here. Alderman Taylor? Here. Next is a temporary suspension of the rules of the Common Council for a web conference. Do we have a motion? Alderman Sevenick? Thank you, Mayor. At this time, I'd like that we make a motion to temporarily suspend the rules of the Common Council and the Mayor so that we can have this tell well webcon conference pertaining to electronic devices. Is there second. a second? The motion is second by Alderman Tom Grady. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Item F is the report of department officers. Uh, Director McKinney has a update on the COVID-19. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Um, so during these challenging times due to COVID-19, we are all faced with decisions to safely reopen and engage within our communities. So businesses, faith communities, schools in the city are all working hard to determine how and when to safely open. To make a decision about how to open, we're referencing the Department of Agriculture, Trade and Consumer Protection, the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, and Wisconsin Department of Health Services guidance. That's the how-to. To determine when to open, we are referencing Badger Bounce Back with its six gating criteria. It's a statewide approach. It guides us through a phased reopening. We're also using Menasha-specific laboratory confirmed COVID-19 <laughs> cases in relationship to total cases conduct conducted. And we're tracking this uh, data daily now. The Appleton, Menasha, Winnebago, Calumet, and Nottagamy County Health Departments have requested regional data from the state and especially hospital data to assist us in making decisions. So the Menasha Health Department webpage and the Menasha Community Development page have up-to-date information to assess, assist the community in safe reopening. I'd like to review our current case counts with you. And I wanted to give you a bit of good news that the gating criteria as of this afternoon um, five of the six measures have been met. Um, so that is good news. We're going in the right direction. So in the state of Wisconsin, <clears throat> there are 250,103 people tested negative for COVID-19. 18,403 people tested positive. There have been 2,583 people hospitalized. 
and 592 deaths. In Menasha, 790 people tested positive for COVID-19. I'm sorry, tested negative for COVID-19. <laughs> yeah, 46 people tested positive. So that's up significantly from the last time we met. And there have been two people hospitalized. There have been no fatalities. One of the hospitalizations was um, actually due to an underlying health condition and they happened to be tested in the hospital um, and tested positive in the hospital. As of this Saturday, those testing positive in Menasha, about 85% um, uh, or 39 of the Menasha cases live in Winnebago County, about 15% or seven um, cases live in Calumet County. Treasurer, I want you, how, many of, how many of the cases have been released from isolation in the city at this point? So um, I just got that data. Here, quite a bit of that was cut off at the end there. I, I just asked how many cases were being released and then have been released from isolation and then Director McKinney probably will have some sure. additional information. I, yep, so of those 46 cases, uh, 19 are active and 27 have, they're out of isolation. We have um, 31 contact investigations going on with this. So. Um, as I was saying, with the current data, I don't think we should use that as an estimate of the city disease rates because they're not representative of the community. The tests that are positive are likely an undercount since initial testing was only available to symptomatic hospitalized individuals. And the recognition of asymptomatic or people without symptoms um, transmitting the disease has been recently recognized and since testing has become more available we've been able to test the asymptomatic individuals only recently. So our health department staff completes contact tracing to identify and follow up with any people who have had close contacts with the individuals who tested positives and as of this afternoon, we're engaged in 31 contact investigations. So some of those may become positive, we just do not know. Um, the percentage of positive tests in comparison to all tests, negative and positive, is about 5.5%. So um, that percentage has remained relatively steady over um, the last 14 days. Uh, in let's see, in cooperation with the city of Appleton, Calumet County, Outagamie, um, and Winnebago, the uh, Wisconsin Department of Health Services and the Wisconsin Army National Guard did put up a community testing site. They completed their miss mission last week at the Fox Valley Technical College. The Department of Health Services now recognizes the need for increased testing. They've, they've long recognized it. We now have the capacity. This will help us box in the virus through contact tracing. And um, we are reviewing new funding opportunities available to local health departments that will help support those efforts. And they would be available to the city of Menasha. And as I said earlier, we were working very closely with the business community, faith-based community and the city in this early phase of reopening safely. Um, we've provided a lot of technical assistance to area businesses and the faith-based community. We're very impressed with the detailed plans that they've shared with us. The faith-based community has committed to meeting weekly to review and share their thoughtful plans, and they are really committed to opening, reopening safely. Again, we all recognize there's no vaccine that can prevent the disease. We have to use protective measures, those everyday measures like washing your hands and wearing the face coverings and limiting physical contact between people. Those are the strategies we have to slow the spread. Um, and I was very impressed with the faith-based community as you know they are putting their plans in place. They're modeling the community norms like face coverings for everyone. So um, that's very good. And they're also taking very seriously um, a look at 
at protecting those most vulnerable, the elderly and those with underlying medical concerns. So again, um, I thank you for your continued support and strength and stay safe. Stay safe. Thank you. You're welcome. Does anyone have any questions for Director McKinney? Alderman Taylor. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, you know, when I, I go to Menards, uh, I have to wear a face uh, mask, which I, uh, I just went out the other day, but I have mine no matter where I go. But I'm just kind of concerned about opening up our swimming pool. And uh, I had two people call me and said, you know, they were grandparents and they're afraid that their kids go to the pool and then come back to grandma and grandpa's house. Uh, you know, we don't even have City Hall open yet, and I see that we filled our swimming pool, and I'm just wondering uh, what the health department's position is on, on the swimming pool. So the health department um, is an agent of the Department of Agriculture, Trade, and Consumer Protection and the Wisconsin Department of Health Services. And um, as I explained earlier, the, the Department of Agriculture and also uh, the Wisconsin um, Economic Development Corporation, they have the guidance to assist in planning. The Department of Health Services gives us information about when to open. And the virus is still present in Menasha, so we do have to help um, do our part to slow the spread. Um, the, the city is in discussions about how best to do that. Um, and I, I have to say, um, as your health officer, I don't recommend opening because at this time, the Department of Health Services recommends that all public pools and uh, splash pads remain closed. Um, however, if the city chooses to reopen the pool to the public, I would strongly recommend there be no open swim and we can work on different um, ways to do that safely. And we would be willing to consult, uh, continue consulting on that. Thank you, thank you for your answer. You're welcome. Again, this is all rapidly evolving and there are gonna be questions about a lot of things that we're you know, reopening. And I, I've been very impressed with how the city has been um, considering, um, planning, collaborating, and um, yet everyone understands that we want things back to normal. It's just that we have um, a virus that's that's here with us right now. Alderman Langdon. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Director Nancy, <clears throat> I agree with Alderman Taylor. Um, uh, if we don't even know when the city hall is going to open, but yet we filled the pool with the water, and I don't know if Brian's got the uh, college kids yet, but um, Oshkosh has canceled their uh, water parks, and they have more than just one. They can guard uh, out. Oh. Appleton, Appleton has has um, canceled their swimming for the season and they have more than one and we have only one uh, so we need to cancel it uh, now uh, I'm with Alderman Taylor on this and my other thing is okay we don't have a virus Nancy but uh, from what I'm I'm hearing is that you people out there um, think this it's 5.5 percent out of a hundred. Where's Nancy? What do you want that number to go down to before we open City Hall? I mean, those are all under discussion too with our regional partners and also with the state. That's a very good question. It's very difficult to discern, but. Again, um, Alderman Langdon, we're working very hard to do the very best we can to open things safely. And we've had really good um, cooperation with getting people back into the office. Now we're transitioning to making sure that 
when people come in that that everybody's protected. Um, it's it's as um, um, Attorney Captain explained, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Um, so we're taking every measure we possibly can, and I feel like I'm we're going warp speed, but um, I know that's not the way it feels when um, when we're not open to the public as um, City Hall yet. And I don't know if the mayor has any comments related to that. Um, we're trying very hard to do that. Um, Nancy, um, you made you made one. One uh, 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 comment, um, okay, that you said the word marathon. The attorney said the word marathon. All right, marathon. So marathon to me is miles. So we're never going to get in City Hall. Nina, Nina City Hall is open. And um, I talked to the their, uh, uh Dean Coppert, um today. and. Uh, They've had no problems. They're, they're, they have, of course, they limited their time. Uh, they open up at nine and they close at three. So, I, you know, to, to, to say we need to keep uh, City Hall close to the public, I, I, I think is ridiculous. So I'm done, thank you. I don't, I don't believe that I said that. I said that we're working on that. That is not, um, um, you know, it's something we want to really do soon as we possibly can. Okay. So let me interrupt a little bit, Mark. So we are waiting on getting the final sneeze guards put in place. That's kind of the last part of the plan that we have to put together for City Hall. And I would expect that to happen hopefully this week sometime. And then that, that once we have that in place and the rest of the plan reviewed by the health department, and I don't think there's a whole lot of other things that we would have to do based upon our current cleaning protocols and temperatures. We will likely be able to reopen City Hall at that point. So that should be happening very soon. As far as the pool and the park and rec programming, we've been working with park and rec as well as the health department to put protocols in place to run safe programming for our youth to have safe supervised activities this summer. Uh, Nina and Little Shoot and Kakana and Green Bay have all announced opening of their pools at this point. And we would also expect to open our pool on a limited basis. We would have uh, very strict um, capacity limits, probably 25% or less of what the capacity of the pool is. We would be giving preference to Menasha residents to make sure that our residents could use that pool and those programs first and try to minimize intermingling of residents from outside of Menasha, bringing in any potential of um, virus from other areas. So we do have some protocols put in place and we're working towards reopening our facilities, both the um, city hall, the public works facility and our, some of our rec programs. Um, we have allowed some limited rentals of our pavilions at this point for 50 or less people, as long as they are um, willing to provide us with data for contact tracing should something happen at one of those uh, rentals that we would be able to reach out to anyone who is there to do contact tracing. Um, the library, I'm not sure exactly where that is looking at for opening. Vicki has put together a draft plan for the health department to review to look at um, usage of some of the computer and other equipment that's not available in drive, drive up, is that what you call it? Uh, so we're working on that as well, and I would expect something to happen with the library as well in the fairly near future. The senior center, we have not made any decisions on yet. That's probably our most vulnerable population. So that would probably be the very last thing that would reopen and that would be on a limited basis. Um, in addition, Director McKinney has been working with a lot of our faith-based communities and working with them to determine the safest way for them to um, have some sort of services, I guess you might call that, or some sort of opening as well. 
Uh, there is also two public pools that have opened within the city at this point. I shouldn't say public, business, businesses business. that are in the pool. Mm -hmm. And the Y is also open with their pools. So um, things are reopening throughout the community. Some of our restaurants have decided that they want to maintain just carry out because that's what they're comfortable with. Um, some have decided to open for dine-in as well. That is their choice at this point, what, what they feel comfortable with and what they feel that their customers would be comfortable with as well. Okay, I got one more thing there. Um, sure. The pool, the pool. Um, all the, all the uh, places you named that are opening up and you're correct, but they are closing their pool to bed to anybody outside of their community. So, you know, uh, Alderman Sevenick, I know, um, uh, talks about this a lot, and, and I'm, I, I also, but we we have that uh, what some set up with Fox Crossing and Appleton, is it, <clears throat> to to use our pool at a. a, a a uh, minimum or whatever a, a pay rate it, we, we do have some reciprocity for the rates we do yeah but we, but we can give preference to reservations and to yeah. entrance to our residents so that's yeah. what we we'll do at this point because the capacity yep. will be limited and we want to make sure that Menasha residents would have first opportunity to get into our facilities before um, people from other communities um, could bump them. Normally okay. we have a capacity of about 950 people in the pool. We're looking at probably in the range of 100 to start out with and no more than 25% of that 950 by the end of the summer. So okay. awesome. So we, we've been thinking about that as well. Yeah, cool. Thanks, Mayor. That's all I have. Alderman Schmidt? Yeah, I just had a question. Um, did I? Okay, there, there I'm unmuted. Just wanted to make sure I was unmuted. <clears throat> the whole reciprocity, is there any way an ordinance can be passed to change that for the short term because of the COVID-19? Rather than having any kind of difficulties with the, you know, with Appleton and Fox Crossing saying, well, you know, we're supposed to be able to get in and we say, well, we're going to give first preference to our residents. Is there anything you, we can do short term that would stop, you know, that from happening, that we could just open it up to only our residents during this whole COVID period? So the recipro reciprocity relates yep. just to the fees. We already do grant preference to our residents okay. for certain rec programming, and this would be the same way that we would that we would grant preference to our residents. And then, if there's still space, then we could allow others to come in. But if there isn't space, we wouldn't. Okay. So what we plan on doing is likely having two lines: one for Menasha residents, and then one for everyone else. And if you're in a group that part of your group is from an ASHA and part isn't, then you might want to be in the other line just to make sure that your entire group either gets in mm -hmm. or doesn't get in. Okay. Now, I was Being just looking for just ways to stop some of the problems that could happen with that. That's all. If just yeah, short so, term, not saying forever, just short term. Yeah. With our school district kind of spanning two communities mm -hmm. that we're, we have a lot of inter intermingling of kids and students. So we're going to have probably some groups that have one Menasha resident and one someone else resident. So we would like mm -hmm. to have those opportunities, but we still want to make sure that the Menasha residents have first chance to get in if there is a capacity issue. Okay. Like I said, I was just looking to see if there would be anything you could do with a short-term resolution to change something, you know. So we might, if, if it's a problem, we possibly could do something like that. I can talk a little bit further with Director Tungate about that too. Okay, I just thought I'd bring it up. Sure. <clears throat> Seven. Hmm. Uh, thanks, Mayor. Uh, I, my question would be: Is 
did we even enter into a reciprocity agreement with anyone at this point? I don't remember if we did or not. Yeah. They're, they're usual multiple years. And 2020. We yeah, we did have they're one. For how year. long? I'm sorry. They're usually two years, either two or three. Oh, they are. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Otherwise, just check into that because I don't know how, how long our last one was. And, and again, the reciprocity is just for fees. It's not, it doesn't say that we can't yeah, allow or give preference to our residents. Right. I know. Alderman Thank Otello? you. Sure. Thank you, Mayor. Um, if I'm standing in line and I'm uh, an Appleton resident and I see all the Menasha kids going in, I uh, kindly move over and say, I'm from Menasha. How are you going to know the difference? They do plan on having cards for Menasha residents that would, uh, you'd have to get the card before you would stand in line so that we would know and have a verification that you are a resident and that card will have a number of prepaid um, entrances into the pool at that point. If you give your card to someone else or lie about your residency, we will confiscate the card and you will lose the any prepaid admissions on that card at that point. Okay, thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. Alderman Taylor. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I, the different conversations were cutting in and out on me, so, but did I understand uh, Director McKinney that her recommendation was not to open the pool? Yes. That is her recommendation, yes. Okay. Now, why would we be going against the CDC and the state of Wisconsin Health Department? And I'm sure that's what Director McKinney is working off of. Uh, why would we be playing Mm -hmm. any any type of uh, uh, other recommendations than what the director is recommending? We, we are discussing the safest way for our children to have supervised activities throughout the summer. And are, there is nothing that says we cannot open the pool. There are things that do recommend smaller groups and um, if our health if our health director and our health department is not recommending this, uh, I, I certainly can't be in favor because I'm not going to uh, in a pandemic here. And as Alderman Rapella said, uh, you know, you're, you're you're playing some games here with people with passing this, passing that, and uh, it sounds pretty uh, doesn't sound pretty accurate to me to have uh, people stand in line and cards and things and uh, as far as I'm concerned, that the health department says we shouldn't open it. Uh, I have to go by that, that we shouldn't open it, period. Thank you. You're welcome. Alderman Rapella. Oh, sorry, Mayor. I'm, I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Seeing no further discussion, we'll move on to the minutes and communications. Do we have a motion? Alderman Sevenick? Thank you, Mayor. At this time, um, I would, I did this last time too, if we're not gonna be talking that we turn our mics off so we don't get any background noise and then only turn it on when, of course, um, you're gonna speak. So at this point, Mayor, I'd like to ask that we receive minutes A through F and communications G. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second by Alderman Taylor. Is there any discussion? Alderman Tom Grady? Um, yes, maybe <clears throat> I can address this to um, Director Sam. The, with the Bonta demolition, I know the fencing has been put up, so they must be getting close to um, demolition. What is the relationship with the demo team and the items that we requested to be safe from the building from the Landmarks Commission. So the the items that we had discussed uh, regarding being saved was negotiated as part of the DOT and the RDA. Um, so several items will be set aside uh, within the the building to that 
is the portion of the building to remain standing. So those items will be okay. set aside for use in the future. Okay, just making sure. Thank you. Alderman Taylor. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, certainly, uh, Sam, I uh, certainly appreciate the update and uh, the drawing that was on there. And um, uh, certainly that um, item D and E, the west end of that building that uh, throughout the state of Wisconsin, the industrial loft apartments are at a premium. And for us to increase the tax base of the city of Menasha, I, I think uh, it would be great to to have this type of uh, development in Menasha on our waterfront of the industrial uh, uh, industrial apartments. Thank you. Okay. Seeing no other discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Seeing none, the motion carries. Item G is public comments. I do see that there are two people from the public, I believe, that are on the call this evening. Did either of you have public comments at this time? How do you make them? I can hear you. So we would need your name and address for the record if you'd like to make a comment. Can't do it. Can't talk. Oh, yep, I can hear you. You can hear me? Yep, yeah. I can hear you. I can, oh. I can hear you. <laughs> yep, I can hear you. I'm talking to a blank screen. I'm sorry. My name is Marsha Stryker, 616 Nicolay Boulevard. Yeah. Okay. Um, and your comment, Marsha? Well, I, I typed in a question and sent it, but I don't know that that was the proper way to do it. But however, um, I'm wondering if originally approved money for major renovation can be redirected to other projects that were originally proposed no. um, in order to use money better spent for the exterior of the home as opposed to an interior bathroom remodel. So are you talking about your project in specific? Mr. I am. And I you am. would have you would have to go back before the housing authority with a revised application, but you could definitely go back before the housing authority to ask for that. Okay, so a brand new application to be proposed. You would yeah, you would have to ask them to modify your current application to remove item A, B, and C and add item. D, E, and F. Is there a specific form for that? Your best bet would be to talk with, um, I'm losing his title, Planner Stevenson. I think you've talked yeah. with Joe quite a bit. Yes, I have, yes. Yeah, so your best bet would be to call Joe tomorrow and just ask for what the process to get that back on the agenda would be. Mm -hmm. And then you okay. could do that if you wanted to. Okay. I, I kind of have done that and and resubmitted new things, but maybe that has to go before the um, housing authority. Yes, it would have to go before the housing authority. Okay. So, so we're getting a little far off the agenda. Normally, we don't have question and answer, but okay. Thank you. We can definitely help you with have Joe help you. Yes, thank you. Sure. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak this evening? Yeah. Someone did just join from the public as well. You'd have to turn your mic on in order to speak at this point. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak? No? Okay, we'll move on to the consent agenda then. We have eight items on the consent agenda this evening. Does anyone wish to have any of those items separated at this point? Alderman Sevenick? Thank you, Mayor. At this time, I would like to hold Board of Public Works items that were recommended, item three, four, five, and six. Does anyone else wish to have any items separated? Alderman Taylor? Uh, item, item eight. Anyone else? 
At this point, do we have a motion for the remaining three items? Alderman Sevenick? Thank you, Mayor. At this time, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the Common Council minutes of 5 18 2020. The administration committee's recommendations to accept bids of the Post Crescent Media as the official newspaper for 2020 and 2021. So, and um, item seven. Wait, what am I doing here? Item okay. seven. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm sorry. Someone was trying to call me. Authorized to execute the Wisconsin DOT Bridge Operations Agreement for fiscal 2021 okay. and authorized to execute Wisconsin DOT TACO Bridge Remote Operations Agreement. Item eight was asked to be separated. So just the agreement for fiscal 2021. So we have items one, the minutes, item two, the Post Crescent Media City newspaper, and seven, the bridge operation agreement for fiscal 2021. Is there I a second? second? I second, Ted Grady. The motion is second by Alderman Grady. Could we have a roll call, please? Alderman Sevenick? Aye. Alderman Langdon? Aye. Alderman Schmidt? Aye. Alderman Tom Grady? Aye. Alderman Ted Grady? Aye. Alderman Rapella? Aye. Alderman Nichols? Aye. Alderman Taylor? Aye. Motion carries 0 Item three is a change order to Vinton Construction Company for the Jefferson Park parking lot basketball court and regrading. It's a deduct of $3,324. Do we have a motion? Alderman Langdon. Thank you, Mayor. I'll make the motion uh, <clears throat> to uh, subtract $3,324, uh, change order number one for the parking lot and the basketball court and regrading. Second. 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 Is that Alderman Ted Grady? Yes. Okay. There's a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing no discussion, could we have a roll call vote, please? Alderman Langdon? Aye. Alderman Schmidt? Aye. Alderman Tom Grady? Aye. Alderman Ted Grady? Aye. Alderman Rapella? Aye. Alderman Nichols? Aye. Alderman Taylor? Aye. Alderman Sevenick? Aye. Motion carries 8 0. Item 4 is a payment to Vinton Construction Company. Is there a motion? Alderman Langdon? Thank you, Mayor. I will make the motion for the payment to Vinton Construction Contract. Unit number 2020 02. That's for the Jefferson Park parking lot, the basketball court, and the regrading. And that is in the payment to them in the in the amount of $133,418.28. And that is payment number one. Second. There's a motion and a second by Alderman Taylor. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, could we have a roll call vote, please? Alderman Schmidt. Alderman uh, Schmidt. Hang on, there. Okay, I hit the button, but it took me to a different screen. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> Alderman Tom Grady. Aye. <laughs> Alderman Ted Grady. Aye. Alderman Rapella. Aye. Alderman Nichols. Aye. Alderman Taylor. Aye. Alderman Sevenick? Aye. Alderman Langdon? Aye. Motion carries 8-0. Item 5 is a change order to Myron Construction Company. Do we have a motion? Alderman Langdon? Thank you, Mayor. I'll make the motion for the change order for Myron Construction Company, Inc. Contract Unit Number 2020-01. 
06. That's for the public works facility project. And it's in the and and it's an an ad of seven thousand seven hundred and twenty six dollars and forty one cents. That's coming from the contingency fund. Change orders number two and three. Second. There's a motion and a second by Alderman Taylor. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, if we could have a roll call vote, please. Alderman Tom Grady. Aye. Alderman Ted Grady. Aye. Alderman Rapella. Aye. Alderman Nichols. Aye. Alderman Taylor. Aye. Alderman Sevenick. Aye. Alderman Langdon. Aye. Alderman Schmidt. Aye. Motion carries 8-0. Item six is a payment to my Rink construction company. Do we have a motion? Alderman Langdon. Thank you, Mayor. I will make the motion for the payment to my Rink construction company, Inc. Contract unit number 2020-6. That's for the public works facility project um, in the amount of $778,993.97. Payment number two. Second. There's a motion and a second by Alderman Taylor. Is there any discussion? Seeing no discussion, if we could have a roll call vote, please. Alderman Ted Grady. Aye. Alderman Rapella. Aye. Alderman Nichols. Aye. Alderman Taylor. Aye. Alderman Sevenick. Aye. Alderman Langdon. Aye. Alderman Schmidt? Aye. Alderman Tom Grady? Aye. Motion carries 8-0. Item 8 is the authorization to execute the Wistat Taco Street Bridge Remote Operations Agreement. Do we have a motion? Alderman Taylor, would you like to take this? Uh, I, oppose, I just thought... Uh, I oppose this at this time. I think uh, uh, we're going to need some leverage with the DOT on, on some issues here. And uh, it's still an early, we're very early out on the remote operation. And uh, I, I feel that uh, uh, at this time, uh, we shouldn't take up the matter. Thank you. Is there a motion at this time? Alderman Nichols? Thank you, Mayor. I'll move for the approval of the authorization to execute Wisconsin DOT Taco Street Bridge Remote Operations Agreement. Is there a second? Second. I'll second. second. I'm not sure who Everybody. the second was. <laughs> was it Ted or Tom? Ted? Stan. Ted. Okay. Stan. <laughs> We're going to give it the second to Alderman Sevenick. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, if we could have a roll call vote, please. Alderman Rapella? Nay. Alderman Nichols? Aye. Alderman Taylor? Nay. Alderman Sevenick? Aye. Alderman Langdon? Aye. Alderman Schmidt? Aye. Alderman Tom Grady? Aye. Alderman Ted Grady? Aye. Motion carries 6-2. Item J is action items. The first item is the accounts payable and payroll for May 15th through 28th. Is there a motion? Alderman Nichols? The accounts payable and payroll for the term of May 15th. 28th, in the amount of $1,122,005.65. Second. There's a motion and a second by Alderman Ted Grady. Is there any discussion? Do you have discussion too, Becky? Yes. Uh, I'd like to remove a check. Sure. The num check number 68360 made out to Jeff Nichols in the amount of $50 for his service on the Board of Review 
uh, I'll be abstaining from that item. Any other discussion? Seeing none, there is a motion and a second to approve the accounts payable and payroll, excluding check number 68360. Can you have that, Haley? Okay. She made a motion to, she asked to separate it. She said she has to separate it. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you said excluding. The motion was to approve it all. And there's just two separate votes, that's all. Okay. So what should the motion be then? That's right. Okay, so excluding that one. And then we'll take a second vote on another one. Separate, yeah. Okay. It was just separated, that's all. We're, we're having a discussion, the correct motion, but we're, we're good. It's the accounts payable without check 68360. We'll take a roll call at this point. Alderman Nichols? Aye. Alderman Taylor? Aye. Alderman Sevenick? Aye. Alderman Langdon? Aye. Alderman Schmidt? Aye. Alderman Tom Grady? Aye. Alderman Ted Grady? Aye. Alderman Rapella? Aye. Motion carries 8-0. So now we have still on the floor a motion to approve check 68360 for $50. Is there any further discussion on that? Seeing none, if we could have a roll call vote, please. Alderman Taylor? Aye. Alderman Sevenick? Aye. Alderman Langdon? Aye. Alderman Schmidt? Aye. Alderman Tom Grady? Aye. Alderman Ted Grady? Aye. Alderman Rapella? Aye. Motion carries 7 0. Alderman Nichols abstained. Item two is the beverage operator's license applications. Do we have a motion? Alderman Nichols? Thank you, Mayor. I'll move to approve the beverage operator's license application for the 19 through 21 licensing period as listed under approved in the clerk's memo dated June 1st, 2020. Is there a second? I'll second it. The motion is second by Alderman Tom Grady. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. I'm saving you some work, really. <laughs> <laughs> Item three is the Class A liquor license application for Doran and Doran. Is there a motion? Alderman Nichols. Thank you, Mayor. I'll move to approve the Class A liquor license application for Duran and Duran LLC, doing business as Chef Fresh Pizza at 204 Manitowoc Street for the 2020 through 2021 licensing year. Second. The motion is second by Alderman Taylor. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, we'll have to have a roll call vote on this one, please. Alderman Sevenick? Aye. Alderman Langdon? Aye. Alderman Schmidt? Aye. Alderman Tom Grady? Aye. Alderman Ted Grady? Aye. Alderman Rapella? Aye. Alderman Nichols? Aye. Alderman Taylor? Aye. Motion carries 8 0. Item four is the Community Fest fireworks. I did include a memo in the pack package tonight. I do have a little bit more information um, that the city of Nina is still planning on moving forward with their fireworks. They are planning on bringing the fireworks to the people is what Mayor Crawford has called it. He plans on shooting the fireworks at a central location other than Riverside Park. And he believes that people would be able to view those fireworks without leaving their homes from one of those locations. He's looking at Washington Park, Arrowhead Park, and possibly Nina High School. And there might have been some other locations, but those I think were the three prominent ones. 
we did look at this show probably brings close to 5,000 people to our community. And Badger Bounce Back, even in phase three, is looking at about 250 people would be the maximum um, event size that they would recommend. We thought that also noting that Oshkosh and Appleton were also not having fireworks, we'd be seeing a lot of people from out of town coming into the community. We did not know how we would um, work to social distance and keep people separated and keep people out of the park if we did um, shoot fireworks within the city. So at this point, our recommendation, both the health department and myself, is that we cancel the fireworks. What that means to us is that we would have to prepay our 20% deposit this year, and that would be applied to next year's fireworks. So we're not really losing any money at this point. We would just be prepaying part of next year's show. Um, we can discuss this. Uh, we can take a motion. If there is no motion, I would take that as the decision from myself and the health department would stand that we would cancel the fireworks. If someone wants to make that same motion, we could take that. If someone wants to make a different motion, we could also do that. Alderman Grady. Thank you. I have a question. I'm not going to make a motion yet. Sure. Would it be possible? To, I think we had the problem with the fireworks years ago. Then we had it on Labor Day instead. Is the possibility of us pushing the ashes to a, a, another date been considered? We That's definitely right. could do that as well. I'm not sure that the situation will change by Labor Day, that we would still want 4,000 people coming to our community, sitting in a tight area, but we could definitely hold off for a month or so and see what things look like at that point and then make a decision for Labor Day, if that's what's desired. Did you have more, Ted? No? Alderman Langdon? Thank you, Mayor. Um, I got into uh, uh, going back with Alderman Taylor and myself uh, on our on how we felt about um, you know our swimming pool, and <laughs> we're we're uh, limiting limiting to that many people, and uh, we're looking at five thousand people. Um, Alderman Grady made uh, we could talk about that, um, but this is just canceling the the July fourth, correct? And and could we still uh, talk about? Uh, Alderman Grady, maybe for Labor Day. I but guess I would. Make, this is only this is only for July Fourth, right, Mayor? I, I would put that in the motion if that's what you wanted to do. That we would bring it back um, in 30 days or something to that effect to discuss for a a show later in the year. If you want to do that, just so that I have direction to bring it back again and can tell our fireworks contractor that that's what our plan is. But yeah, you could definitely do that. Okay. Two um, other people that want, on? Mark, I have two other people that want to discuss, so why don't we let them discuss and then if, okay. yep. if that's the motion that everyone wants to make, we can do that at that point. Yeah, you bet. Alderman Rapella? Uh, thank you, Mayor. I'll, I'll make a motion to cancel the fireworks. <laughs> Uh, can I make a motion to cancel the fireworks for the year 2020? You can. Alderman Sevenick still wanted to speak, so you well, might want to speak first. Okay. Alderman Sevenick? Thank you. Although I appreciate what Alderman Rapella wants to do, I don't think we need to make a motion at all. The mayor's already made his recommendation, and so did the health department. So I think basically we just move forward. We don't need to make a motion. And, and as and far uh, as far as uh, Alderman Langdon and Grady, obviously, we'll see how things are later on, and we can always make that yep. decision at a later date. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, cool. I guess if the council does want to look at a later date, I would like to be able to tell Bill Bauer that we're looking at that. So if you that can is tell him that, you can tell him that? that. But I mean. We, we have to play everything by ear here, so. Well, I get that, but is that the direction that we want to go or yeah. is that 
The direction yes. of sure. Alderman. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Alderman Taylor. You know, you're following the, the guidelines of the CDC and uh, like it or not, this uh, pandemic's going to be with us for at least a year uh, before there's any type of uh, vaccine that we're going to be able to correct this. And by putting that many people together, if it's uh, Labor Day or Thanksgiving, uh, uh, I, I'm not sure that uh, it, it's, a, it's a good idea. We all want to be hopeful. We all want to have this thing go away tomorrow but i don't i don't think that's um, uh and even if they had a vaccine it wouldn't be distributed by labor day that that would be for sure so uh it's just my comments i think i heard from a majority of the council that they would like to reconsider this though later this summer and is that what i heard yes Okay. Is that what you want to say to Alderman Langdon? Well, yeah, I, I, I was just, um, yeah, I, I, so um, we're canceling the July 4th, and that's about, um, myself and others. We can revisit this. Um, I know Alderman Taylor, I, I get it. I'm definitely with him. Um, uh, but it, we can revisit it and uh, would they be okay with that? Uh, they would be waiting in limbo for us, from us, because of um, the down payment. So would they be, would they be, in, can, uh, uh, be okay with us saying, well, we, we, let's see where we're going with this and we'll make a decision down the road. So what I'll do tomorrow is I will call Spielbauers and tell them that we do not wish to go forward with July 4th and that we may consider a later date mainly labor day what would be the latest date we could make that decision and then we'll put yeah, that yeah. Back on the council agenda for whatever that date is what the latest date is that sounds good great mayor okay <laughs> item five is the strong neighborhood <laughs> do we have a motion or Alderman Rapella. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, reading your motion, it says your recommendation that the ad hoc committee, what I'd really like to do is have a motion for a workshop between June 2nd and June 12th um, to recommend changes that may be necessary to the program to further city housing goals and that all pending and future applications be held pending recommendations from the ad hoc committee, actually from the workshop and action from the city council. So in addition to that one that uh, the speaker at 616 on uh, Nicolay Boulevard, that is still in limbo depending on our recommendations from our workshop. So could that be done? Thank you. I'll second the motion. So there was a motion and a second from Alderman Rapella and Alderman Sevenick. Uh, we are, there was a little bit of discussion, I shouldn't say discussion. The attorney was having some concerns and about stopping current applications. And I'm not sure that she was understanding what that meant. So these are, these are applications that people have turned in but haven't went to the board yet at this point. All right, but that one also wants to make an addition or an amend amendment to her application. We need to decide if we will accept that when we have our workshop. The, the ones that are approved, we can't change. So if she wants Bye. to do what she originally had proposed, we cannot change that. Well, then she'll get her new Mayor. bathroom whether she Attorney. likes it or not. Attorney Captain. The issue that I see is that if someone has looked at the requirements and submitted an application and it's pending, no. You can't change the rules after they've already submitted something. No, yes, we can. 
Yes, you can. May or may I speak? Them what the rules are. If you have an ordinance, you can't just change the ordinance. We're doing when it right now, uh, uh, Attorney hold, Captain. Hold on. Let's let's get some order here. Yes. Thank you. Hold, hold on, Randy. Uh, so right now, the these these have just been turned in. They have not been accepted. They are just right. going to be placed on the agenda but for another they, committee. They submitted an mm -hmm. application based on the program requirements, have looked at the requirements, have indicated, yes, I'm going to, I would like to do this particular project and I'm going to come up with this amount of money. Mm -hmm. And now you're going to change the rules on them? I agree with you. It's not a good thing to do, but they have not been accepted yet either so the been board, accepted the board could just say no to all of them correct they did reject some of them already if it meets the program requirements there's oh. nothing that says we it's first come first serve right the requirements are that the board makes the decision if they want to approve each project individually based upon a rubric that determines the mm -hmm. benefits to the city. And if they meet that and they already looked at that rubric and know what the what they need to show in order to move forward with a project and have submitted an application, you're going to tell people, oh, sorry, we're going to change all the rules. You need to start all over. That's what this is asking to do, yes. And I agree with you. I think it's That's a bad precedent. I would wait till 2021, but that is not necessarily my my um, decision right now. Alderman Sevenick, did you? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's probably not the most friendly way of doing it, but we're talking about taxpayer dollars being used for a program that I believe I most of us me, don't agree with the total policy yet. So um, we can change. They haven't been approved yet. Had they been approved and then we changed it, that'd be different. But they haven't been approved yet. All it is is a piece of paper saying, I'd like to do this. And then we look at it and say, okay or no. And right now we have that. That's why we're looking at the urgency of this before too many more applicants come in and the funds are dried up for purposes that many of us feel is inappropriately funding some of these things. We uh, Alderman Taylor and I tried to address this. We had, we changed two things, brought it to the council, and we were going to continue more on this. But then COVID hit and we weren't able to meet with staff anymore. So um, it's not like we tried to change in midstream. We were trying to work and, and make some uh, accommodations and changes. So um, it's unfortunate that it happened this way. So yeah, it sounds like some other people want to talk. I'll let them talk. Thank you. Thank you, so Mayor. You're welcome. So this program was approved by the entire Common Council. There's been no changes to it at this time. And now the Common Council wishes to make some changes to it. This is what's going on. But this is nothing new. This is what was originally approved by the Common Council, just so the members of the public are clear that this isn't something that staff changed or was a surprise. This was included in the packet originally. Alderman There's Tegrati? a problem with interpretations. Alderman Ted Grady? Thank you, Mayor. Um, yes, I I just don't understand if we even, you know, Alderman Rapella kind of wanted a tomorrow date or something. City Hall's not open, so you can't have a, a, a committee or anything going quite yet. And I don't know if we need an ad hoc committee for this. We have a housing authority committee. That, that's, that's their job. They bring recommendations then back to the council nay or yay them. and right now i agree that we gotta tweak some of the process outside exterior maybe dollar for dollar inside exterior 
No. Maybe they get 50 cents to every five bucks they spend or something like that. But, and I agree with also uh, Alderman Stan Sevenick, if the already has been approved, then yes, we have to. But the ones pending, no, I, I, I don't agree that we have to um, set aside monies for that because all of a sudden the monies could be gone tomorrow. Thank you. That's what we should be. Alderman Tom Grady. Thank you, Mayor. I do agree there is some tweaking that probably needs to be done, but one thing that's crucial is the way we drag things out, and this is the time to have exterior work done on homes. There are contractors that are looking for jobs, and we're going to postpone this through the crucial um, summer months that they could be working on these some of these houses. I think it's just um, adding muck to the water here. Thank so, you. Sure. There's one other thing that you could do if you wish to do. You could place a moratorium on any new applications and allow what's currently in the hopper to be uh, looked at by the housing authority and move through the process. Uh, Alderman Nichols, and then I'll get to Director Schrader. Thank you. If it's all right, I'll yield to Director Schrader and then ask my questions. Sure. Director Schrader. I, I just wanted to, thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to make one comment, I guess, before we went too far. Um, obviously, we're talking about a, a very large program that has uh, different uh, programs built within it. I think a lot of the, uh, the concern is around the major renovation, which does allow for uh, forgivable loans for interior models. Um, I just uh, had looked at the list um, that Joe Stevenson pulled together, uh, Principal Stevenson pulled together for me uh, before this meeting. And we do have uh, an actual first time home buyer application that is out there. Um, so I guess I, I would request um, the common council would that would consider maybe moving forward with the first time home buyer uh, section of the program should they wish to uh, postpone other portions. Uh, again, that is uh, all staff administratively approved, and, and that's what, uh, you know, again, individuals that may be looking at buying their first house, uh, you know, realtors have been have been told that, that we have this program, and if, if somebody even put it in, a, got an accepted offer or something, and, and is kind of looking for that, that first-time homebuyer grant, um, I, I would just request that potentially that be taken out of the moratorium or or the postponement um, for consideration. Alderman Nichols. Thank you. Uh, Director Schrader, how many uh, how many applications are currently pending for the next meeting? Right now we have uh, two major renovations. Uh, three curb appeals, and at the last meeting, the Housing Authority did table three uh, major renovations that were primarily interior remodels um, as they were looking for future direction from the, uh, from the Common Council. Uh, nine. So that's a total of nine items then, and when is the next meeting? The next meeting is June 22nd. Do you expect to receive more applications between now and June 22nd? Uh, we likely you know, would receive additional applications. However, I believe uh, because of the, the time it takes to process these, look, in, look through them, um, similar to what we would do for, um, for planning commission and things of that nature, we do put a, a cutoff date on those applications to go on to that next meeting, which I believe, uh, and again, I'd have to touch base with Principal Stevenson, um, but I believe that was today was gonna be the cutoff day for the June 22nd meeting. So future applications would have went, um, or incomplete applications would have went to the following meeting. So uh, if a moratorium were to be placed on applications, would June 1st then be, um, the, the date required? Uh, 
or or June second, I guess, for the applications that were received today. So yes. Okay. Okay. I agree with with the idea that the program should be reevaluated, and I think the appropriate time to do that is at the um, end of one cycle. So somewhere near the end of 2020, when we're gearing up for budget time and um, things of that nature. The council approved the current program for the year and everything that's in it, the council appropriated the funds uh, for this year. And the community has an expectation based on what's in that program based on what's laid out what they have to do and what they can expect so um i would support accepting these applications through um june 2nd for the next meeting and then taking some time to reevaluate the program Um, Director Schrader, how many, how much funding was appropriated for the program and how much has been used? Uh, allocated to date um, out of the $300,000 2020 budget was $156,293, which leaves us with $143,700 and some change. And if you accounted for the applications that would appear on the June twenty second meeting, what would be um, left then? Uh, so the pending applications that we have out there, including again the one first time home buyer that I mentioned, um, we would have one hundred and five thousand, uh, but we also do have the three tabled. Uh, major renovations that were tabled um, with requests for additional in information from the Common Council. So again, if that information has been provided, they will likely stay uh, stay tabled. So again, the remaining funds, if if all was approved, um, would be the thirty-eight thousand. Uh, but there are forty-five thousand dollars of funds that are tabled as well. Okay, thank you. Alderman Taylor. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I agree with uh, what the Alderman uh, Nichols had uh, just uh, said. And, you know, one thing about this program, and as she said, we put together this uh, housing authority to overlook this and director stevenson and director um trader have um both put a lot of time in this program and the formula and the rubric formula really applies well to this um program as we were we were passed out a map early on of the areas in the city that really need to have a lot of work. And I know my district was the heaviest because of the aging housing stock in our community. And the key was to help our housing stock and I complimented the mayor quite a few times and to members of the public uh, about this program. And I know the mayor worked very long for a couple of years here looking at a way to help help the older neighborhoods in our community, because once you lose a once you lose a block or a neighborhood, uh, it's the broken window effect. It's just going to keep going downhill, and that hasn't happened yet. So I, I appreciate this program, and and the effectiveness of it. Does it need to be tweaked a little? Any program does. Social Security was passed. Or, I mean, uh, uh, Medicare was passed in in 1963 they still tweak it every year social security back in the 30s they still tweak it so any program needs to be tweaked and that formula as we just heard with the applications that are 
denied or held are with that form, that rubric formula that where the house is, the age of the house, uh, the, the curb appeal, all those factors are brought into it. Uh, and the housing authority has done a, a, a good job of that. And do we need to tweak it at some point? Yes, I've been uh, vocal about that um, uh, throughout uh, and uh, had met with, uh, back in January, the director and with uh, Alderman Sebenek. And we didn't run out of time. We just kind of left it go on because that was January and nothing really hit till late March. So uh, we just accepted the program as Alderman Nichols said, we voted on it and we put it into the hands of uh, another agency of the city. And um, I, I, I think uh, as Alderman Nichols said, uh, we should move forward and then reevaluate uh, at the next step. Thank you. Alderman Langdon. Thank you, Mayor. I just, the, uh, I was right, trying to write something down as Alderman Taylor. Um, okay. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this um, uh, uh, first question, um, Director Sam. Um, just to remind me, I, I, I can't remember. I know we voted on the, for the program, um, but this sticks in my mind. Um, wasn't it uh, for, um, uh, I don't know what the other word is, so I'm going to just say for the curb in the front of the houses? Um, is, isn't that what <clears throat> this program was called? Uh, no, not necessarily. Uh, that certainly is an aspect of the program, uh, but the goals, objectives, the overview of the program, if you actually read uh, read that or go back and read that, um, touches base on, on improving the overall quality of Menasha's housing stock, um, increasing home ownership uh, uh, stability, and, and, and looking at the, the school rates and the rental rates and, and things of that nature. So all those things go much much farther than just just a curb appeal aspect of the okay. program. Now, again, that's that's a part of it, but um, it, the program does go much farther than that. Okay, cool. Sounds good. Number two, uh, Sam, um, if uh, we don't spend this money, uh, all of it, um, at, on this budget, where does the rest of the money go? Uh, it, it's designed to to actually stay within the program, so it'll continue year upon year um, as long as we have funds uh, to continue to to issue new grants, loans, um, provided that the uh, the county or the excuse me the common council chooses to. Okay. Um. So I think um, uh, uh, for the mayor and every uh, attorney. Uh, Director Sam, uh, uh, Director uh, uh, Joe Stevenson. Um, I think there's there, there's some uh, aldermen that are um, are afraid that if we go at a fast rate, that and then we use up the million dollars uh, in 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 the uh, two years. Okay, so. We, we wouldn't want to cut this program done then, but that would mean then we would have to replenish the money. And so that's what some aldermen are concerned about is uh, spending all that money. Yeah, let's, let's go and do, you know, that try to spread the, that million dollars, hopefully, out uh, for a while. And, and um, that's where uh, some of the aldermen are worried about that, you know, the, we gave the authority to the housing authority. Uh, so, but that's where some, I know some aldermen are worried about that, that, uh, you know, using up all the money, um, do we, you know? Um, so, and then uh, we don't want to, let's drag this out as far as we can. Um, and that's the housing authorities. Um, uh, um, decision. 
in in and I know some some aldermen are hoping that and I think they will that they would uh you know and it sounds like they will because you you you'd already gave us uh um some so that was uh on number two is the concern about using all the money up and then have to replenish it where can we you know let's try to take that maybe take that million dollars a number another two years um so okay and um all right before let's see i'll go there um alderman taylor uh uh mentioned um uh, about the the housing program and, and i agree with him uh that he mentioned uh over on our our area over here um you know uh uh alderman, alderman randy his district out there those are those, that that area is only 20 years old, and I know because my brother and sister-in-law were one of the first ones to move out there, and their backyard faces Barker Farm or uh, playground, and and so well maybe 20, 20, 21 years anyway. So I drove around that area today, and and it's like, and I'm looking at myself and I'm going, really, really. Uh, if you or that house, really, you're going to come in and try to use this program where Alderman Taylor, and I'm going with him, that in our area, I think our area, we should, uh, is there somehow uh, with the housing authority to look at that, uh, to really gear this toward, let's say, um, from uh, Melissa Street to, 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 to the water. just a, a, thought um so okay um that's uh number two and three okay four so i have one more sam uh i do agree um we did um vote to give um first time home buyer that is coming into menasha not menasha to menasha but coming in to menasha uh, yeah, we 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 voted for that to give them that first time home buyer because they're 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 looking to move into Menasha and it's like okay we'll give you five thousand dollars to do that absolutely um, so I do agree with that that um, on this first time home buyer we gotta we gotta give them that so I uh, that's my points okay thank you. Alderman Sevenick. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I, I think Alderman Rapella said that you muted him. So he's wanted to talk. But anyways, um, here's why I supported the Strong Neighborhoods Program. Number one, the probably the biggest one was because these funds could be used for purposes that would help our community and number one help us as a city itself meaning we were able to use these funds to maybe purchase properties for redevelopment we haven't done any of that for instance like thank goodness the bren people are taking care of their own situation but if we want to do things on water street we might need to purchase properties or some other area and this is where the, some of that money could have come from. That's why I supported it. The other big reason was to convert a multi-family to say a duplex or, or, or something that's zone R2 to a single family. And Sam, I'm not sure if we've even done that at all because I don't get to, I don't see the application. So I'm not familiar if that's happened at all. I believe that the program, as it is written now, is too generous. And that's part of my reasoning for wanting to tweak it. Um, it sounds like if we go along with the recommendations that Alderman Nichols and Taylor suggest, we'll pretty much drain the fund for, in my opinion, not what it was established for. Um, I agree with Alderman Ted Grady. I like the idea of loans more than just 
total grant dollars given out so that people take a stake in in this so um there was something that ted had meant i mean tom had mentioned um that i wanted to to kind of cover but i uh, just generally i just think it's too generous and that a lot of it what it was intended for isn't being done and it's being used for other things so that's why i think we need to tweak it otherwise i'm ready to end it thank you alderman taylor and thank you mayor a couple of things uh alderman lane had touched on about our home out in uh, alderman rapella's district uh compared to a home over on fifth street or fourth street or broad street um that's all taken care of with the housing authority in their formula which was designed so well uh by by the staff in, in the community development department that would give preference to an older home on broad street uh compared to a home out in uh the southfield subdivision let's say so that's all built into the formula that the precedent that that money would probably go to that older home in the older neighborhood and the lower income that that the rubric formula takes consideration for all of that and every time a home is improved Manasha benefits from it uh the 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 home is improved the tax the taxes will go up the house is worth more the taxes go up on that house so uh the city is getting the money back uh and that's what's so neat about the project is that it increases the value of that house and the tax base increases and Manasha gets that tax base back um and something else uh, I would like the mayor to touch on. There's so much money in 2020, the, the project isn't going to dry up. And then again, I believe in 2021, there's an, uh, uh, another uh, 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 dollar amount that's put in for the year 2021 or 2021. Is that true, Mayor? So. Sam, you might have helped me here a little bit, but there was originally about 600,000, I believe, in the account from TIF 5, and we did allocate about 300,000 of that for this year. Then we also put six or 700,000 from TIF 6 in, and we do have some use for that by the Appleton Water Plant area, but we also have TIF 9 that's coming up for closure within the next four or five years, there could also be some funds placed from that TIF into this program at that point as well. So we think that we can spread these dollars out to make this program last for a significant amount of time. There might be a little bit of a gap in, before TIF 9 is ready to close, but we should be able to continue this program for a number of years. Do I have that fairly close, Sam? I think the original amount was closer to 700,000, um, but yes, you are correct that we have only allocated 300,000 of that uh, in 2020. And obviously, uh, you know, staff wants this program to be successful this year and many years forward. So uh, again, we are we are very open to uh, discussing uh, some of the concerns from the alderman as we kind of addressed and, and Alderman Sevenick had mentioned uh, earlier this year and brought forward uh, some preliminary recommendations, but we certainly want to continue this program and, and have it work um, for the long term. Do you have anything else, James? Yes, I just wanted to say, so again, the checks and balances, it's not like the money's going to completely disappear. We got uh, this amount this year for this program, and then the year's coming, we got more money for the program, and like every time, we do things in our lives, we learn from it. It's an opportunity to help. Uh, I feel uh, it, it leans towards the older homes in the city to get our housing stock in shape and increase the value of those houses so we don't start losing a block or a neighborhood to
disrepair. And again, I did compliment the mayor early on that, uh, and I know he worked very hard to, to find some some angle to help make this. And the housing authority with the rubric metric that they're following really, really works well. Is the program perfect at this point? No, it's not. And do we got to tweak it a little at some point? Yeah, so, uh, but, it's it's uh it's a wonderful program for the community i appreciate direct trader and i said before director stevenson <laughs> but i'll give them that title tonight for for their work on this program thank you alderman rapella did you wish to add something you were for whatever reason your mic was making a lot of noise so i muted you I've been muted the last, uh, thank you, Mayor. I've been muted the last 10 minutes. Um, you, you did not have your hand up. So put your hand up if you. I had my hand up the whole time, sir. Um, and you missed that. Um, this program, uh, I made this uh, recommendation or this uh, uh, question about this program because I feel much of this money is being. 15,000 is a little bit too much to give. I agree that we need to fix up the houses in Menasha, and I'm not adverse to this program. Stan had mentioned about uh, buying older houses, uh, changing two, uh, uh, two residence houses into one. That's why I voted for this program originally. That was the big selling point. That has not happened. We have been uh, fixing up bed uh, bathrooms. We've been fixing up windows one house that was previously spoken of uh, was well over two hundred thousand dollars and they got full fifteen thousand dollars to fix something up and um, I would like to tweak this program to allow more houses and cut the fifteen thousand dollars down to a, a workable number of maybe ten thousand at the max allow more houses to participate in this program and also uh, work out some type of program where it's not considered a free, a free, uh, a free payout from the city of ten thousand dollars or eight thousand. Have a little bit of a ratio, one to two, one to three, depending on if it's an interior or an exterior repair, and actually uh, expect the people to. Um, have a, a little different payback system. If they move out before five years, they would have to pay it back. But I'd also like them to stay 10 years. And if they don't stay 10 years, they have to pay back like 25 or 50 percent of the portion of what they earned from the city. I'm trying to get people to stay here. And um, that's why I wanted this program to be tweaked. I'm very disappointed that the program Initially, it was very pushed on uh, buying old, uh, old uh, buildings, or houses, and also changing from a, 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 an apartment to a single family. We haven't done that, and that was a huge selling point brought on by Sam. Not fixing up of bathrooms in houses in the interior, and now all of a sudden, that's what this is for. And there, Matt, I really, jump in there. I would yeah. like to, I, I, let me finish, please. I would like to be able to have a discussion, either an ad hoc committee or a workshop in the next eight to 10 days so we can have this done for our next council meeting on the 16th, on the, fifth, on the 15th, and then we can be ready for the 22nd. And those houses that have not been approved and are still in limbo, that have applied even up to today, um, they have they can be not approved on the 22nd or approved. We, depending on what we come up with before the 15th meeting. And that's what I'm asking for the other aldermen to agree to this. I realize that many of you have had constituents that you have reached out to, to help them fix up their houses. And um, I have not done that. But um, so I know you may have some promises in the works. So right now I'm asking that you please allow us to have a workshop in the next two weeks before the 15th and come up with some agreements 
and discuss this rationally as eight intelligent people. Thank you. I, I just did want to make one comment here just so everyone realizes that this is a matching grant program. So this is not just a gift from the city. The homeowner does have to come up with a match for any funds that we would apply to the project. Plus they have to guarantee that they would live there for at least five years after the project is finished to improve stability of that neighborhood. If they didn't live there for five years, they would have to pay that grant back at that point. Director Mayor, Schrader you know, I, asked yeah. a minute ago to speak. I'd like to address something as, as it's been noted by uh, a couple different aldermen that staff sold the program or misled the common council that the program that we were going to be going out and buying properties to tear down. What this program allows us to do is it provides a fund for if an opportunity arises where the city needs to step in and acquire that, it is not intended for us to actively go out and look for houses to tear down or to, to remove. Um, right. Prior to the year that this was this program was put in place and, and worked upon, the city had had to assist in tearing down, I believe, three or four homes. Um, there was fires, there was raising repair orders that were not going on. There were squatters, there was uh, a lot of drugs. Um, you know, you put, a, you put a repair order on a house and if they do not repair, we as a city are obligated to do that repair. Well, if there's no way to actually work with that property owner to acquire that property, it sits out there in limbo. Uh, there are several of these properties out there that are sitting out there that are vacant. So the, again, this program gives us the ability to do that, not necessarily um, that we're going to go out. And, and the second point, I guess, is that this program has only been in place for five months. <clears throat> and we've only, you know, Ted, two, two meetings that have been brought forward. Uh, so again, to bring one of these ap applications forward, and especially the, the conversion programs, takes a lot of effort to find that right house, uh, you know, with the developer to, to work out funding, to work out the application. So again, I, I understand the, the want and the need to make sure there are funds for those projects. But at the same time, it, it's not, uh, I guess, acceptable in, in my mind to say that we're not doing our job um, because again, those conversations are out there. They just have not happened yet. Um, and again, we are not forcing people to uh, convert um, convert these houses. Uh, and in addition, we are not actively going out there to find houses to tear down and to acquire. That That's not what that was intended for. It's intended to have a fund available to tap into that we haven't had in the past when those situations arise. Thank you. I agree. Alderman Nichols. Thank you. Um, when we're ready, could we have the motion read back to us, please? I'm not I sure. Still have, uh, yeah, I'm not sure if there was a motion or not, but. There is, I but I still have my hand up. But I just said when we're ready. Okay, Thank you. nothing else then, Becky? So Stan is the last one then with his hand up at this point. Go ahead, Alderman Seven. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I totally agree with uh, what Sam was saying. Um, I don't, uh, hopefully he didn't think I was implying that we were looking for you to go out there and search for these. Um, you know as well as I that there were at least two properties that you and I dealt with as far as uh, fires and wanting to take care of them and they did get taken care of but it would have been easier to have a strong neighborhoods program. Um, I do have to say this I agree with Alderman Taylor strongly about trying to focus more on older homes. Um, I don't like the idea that it's just wide open to anybody. I know that's a strong position with the mayor and I can understand that but really we're trying to correct a problem that we have in the community and that's uh, substan it, it's housing that needs some sprucing up. Um, and then I'll just conclude to say this, I'm actually very happy with the Housing Authority's uh, committee and how they've been handling these. Um, they've actually tabled those three. When I read those minutes, I was surprised and very happy to see that. Um, 
I guess what we're asking tonight, because I did second the motion, is that this needs tweaking. That's, and the thing is, I tried to do some of this earlier, but of course got caught off guard because like Alderman Taylor said, it wasn't really the building season yet and um, COVID-19 hit and it just, even today I can't get to City Hall. So um, I think it's a good idea. We try to have a workshop to iron out this stuff. We're not gonna be able to do this on the phone like this. So I agree with Alderman um, Rapella that we have to tweak this program. I'm, I'm not completely happy with it right now. And uh, I guess it just hits me the wrong way. Thank you. I guess Alderman Seven, to clarify your point about me feeling very strongly that it's open to everyone. I think it's not yes. necessarily needing to be open to everyone, but what I don't want this to be is a low income program. I want this to be open to people of average income so that people that aren't eligible for our CDBG program that um, need to uh, have a little bit of assistance to help spruce up their homes have some way of doing it. So I, I, okay, could, that's fair. I could live with that's fair. Some restrictions, but I don't want to say that it's just for low income people. That's so fair. It sounds like there was a motion on the floor. Um, can you read Yes, that? I did have a motion. You're on. Yes, it sounds like the original motion was to hold a workshop to discuss some tweaks to the program. That was made by Randy and seconded by um, Alderman Sevenick. Okay. So there's the motion is to hold a workshop between now and the 12th to discuss revisions to the plan. Director Strader, did you have? Something else? Yes, I, I guess I, I just would like to reiterate, as as stated early uh, earlier, uh, and request a an amendment excluding first time home buyers. Um, as if if a individual was looking for a house, they may have an accepted offer, they may be closing, and and have already kind of looked for those funds. And again, they're not likely not going to push that closing date. Um, or, or potentially can't, uh, depending if they have an accepted offer. So I would request that amendment. I agree. What was agree. the dollar amount? What was that dollar amount? Uh, Five thousand dollars for some home buyer. And as of right I'll now, we that have an, one. for now to keep the peace, I'll offer that as an amendment that we uh, allow for that particular um, first-time home buyer applicant to be able to be processed. Second. Who was, I didn't catch who that one was. Second. Mark Langdon. Ben Langdon. Yeah. Yes. Any discussion on the amendment? James, did you have on the amendment or something, the, the original motion? Yeah, I, 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 want to, I want it read back again. So the amendment is just to exclude the first time home buyer program from the, from the moratorium? Okay, fine. I, I, okay. There really isn't. So, Ash? Yes, the original motion does not include the amendment. The original motion was just about having a workshop and to make revisions to the Strong Neighborhoods program. Right. We're voting on the amendment now. And also, I'm sorry, Mayor? I, Mayor? Hold on. The amendment really isn't germane to the motion, I guess, is the problem. The, uh, the motion would not stop anything from happening. It just has a. It just directs us to have a workshop. And At also, the common council okay. meeting, we yeah. they, some direction could be made to change the program. So, the yeah, motion, the yeah. amendment really isn't germane to the motion. Okay. Mayor, Mayor, please. And, then we so take the second back in our and stands uh, motion. Yeah. Well, I think it is. I think it is Jermaine, and um, yeah. oh. because Randy's motion was not read back exactly the way Randy stated it either. So correct. Correct. Randy, are you 
Randy, are you able to repeat your motion? Yes, I am. Mayor, can you allow for him to do that? We can. We can listen again. Okay. My recommendation, um, uh, I make a motion that a workshop be held to review the goals and objectives and recommend changes that may be necessary to the program to further city housing goals. That all pending and future applications be held pending recommendations from the workshop committee and action from the city council. And the meeting, I would like the meeting held before, before June 12th so we are able to act on the 15th. So that's why I feel the the amendment is germane because, and that's why Sam was concerned because okay. um, how the motion was read. So the so the motion is the recommendation at the bottom of your your memo, and that that happens that a workshop you know, to review it, and that happens before June 12th. Yes, that's correct. He also motion also was to suspend any further, well, whatever. It's that, that all pending and future applications be held pending recommendations from the the, the common council. Right. Can you, okay. Except for I made an amendment for the one because right. apparently it sounds like it's very pending at this point. Okay. So that wasn't the motion that we had thought you had when you made that amendment. Okay. So what we have for a motion is that a workshop to review the goals and objectives and recommend changes that may be necessary to the program to further city housing goals and that all pending and future applications be held pending recommendations from the Common Council until June 12th, before June 12th. That doesn't make sense either. That the workshop be held. <laughs> that a workshop to review, yeah, that should go on the first one. Yeah, he added that somehow. <laughs> so let's read this again, that a workshop be held to review the goals and objectives and recommend changes that may be necessary to the program to further city housing goals before June 12th, and that all pending and future applications be held pending rep recommendations from the Common Council on June 15th. Correct? Correct. Okay. And I don't know who seconded it originally. Yeah. Hold on. I think we I did. Yes. So you're seconding that, Stan, and then and then you're making a amendment that right. this not include the first time home buyer program and not necessarily that but the re the current application applicant okay. good okay and that was originally seconded by alderman langdon yes right okay okay so right now then what we're looking at is just the amendment. Yeah. Right. Do we have discussion on just the amendment? James, okay. Sam, did you have discussion on just the amendment? I was only gonna note, uh, my request was for all first time home buyers. Uh, but again, I appreciate Alderman Sevenick at least taking out the one, thank you. And there's currently only one, correct? Yes. Okay. Alderman Rapella, is this on just the amendment? No, I, my hand, no, I don't want my hand up. I'm down. No comment. Okay. So on the amendment, we'll just take a voice vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Are, there, are there any opposed? Seeing no opposed, the amendment carries. Now we're back to the original motion. Alderman Nichols, did you have something on the motion as amended? Uh, yes. Is it possible to separate the question? So in other words, vote on the, the formation of the, uh, or having the workshop 
And then another question about the pending and future applications. Yes. The attorney is shaking her head yes. Thank so you. I would like to separate the question. Okay. Where does the amendment go on that then? The second one. With the second half? Okay. Okay. Alderman Taylor. Well, you'll have to read the motion, Mayor, of what the separation would be as we vote for it, okay? Sure. Did you have something general, James, or did... No? I had my hand up, but I got interrupted. Oh, yeah, I just <laughs> asked if you had something uh, else. Yeah. Uh, I, I've asked for workshops since November, December, January, and February. They haven't happened way, way before COVID, okay? And all of a sudden, we're into this program, and then all of a sudden, it's it's a big deal now. And I've asked for these workshops all along. But how are we going to have a workshop? Is it going to be a teleconference workshop? No, it will be an in-person workshop and we will have it posted and we will put the tables in a big circle downstairs so that we're all six feet apart or more and we will do it that way. Hey Mayor, according to the CDC, uh, I, am, I am in the high risk group of 65 and older, and they tell you to stay home. And see, we're not, we haven't hit those guidelines yet. With yep, the, and the attorney said that we can find a way for the people that have have um, concerns to meet via phone if need be. So we can make accommodations I, for I'm you. I'm not in favor of having it at this time. Yeah, well, I'm not, I'm not in favor of happening at this time. Thank you. Okay. Okay, I don't see any other discussion right now. So we have two motions. The first motion is that a workshop to review the goals and objectives and recommend changes that may be necessary to the program to further housing goals be held before June 12th. Any discussion on that motion? I don't see anyone else with Alderman Nichols. Although I don't feel June 12th is the appropriate date, I will support the formation of the, of, or having the workshop. Anyone else? We will have a roll call vote on this. Alderman Langdon. Aye. Alderman Schmidt. Aye. Alderman Tom Grady? Aye. Alderman Ted Grady? Aye. Alderman Rapella? Aye. Alderman Nichols? Aye. Alderman Taylor? I'm sorry, what was that? I will vote aye if I can do it with teleconferencing, like, like we're doing. I vote aye if I can do it by the, the method we're doing it tonight. Thank you. Sure. We'll make accommodations either by a webinar or by a phone, one of the two. Alderman Sevenick? Aye. Motion carries 8-0. So the second motion was that all pending and future applications be held pending recommendations from the workshop and the Common Council, and this not include current applicants for the first time homeowner program. Any discussion on that one? Seeing none, if we could have a roll call on that one as well. Alderman Schmidt? Aye. Alderman Tom Grady? Aye. Alderman Ted Grady? Aye. Alderman Rapella? Aye. Alderman Nichols? Nay. Alderman Taylor? Nay. I'm sorry, was that a nay? Nay. Oh, Okay. Alderman Sevenick? Aye. Alderman Langdon? Aye. Motion carries 6-2. Okay, moving on. Resolution 21, do we have a motion? Yes. 
I'm sorry, Alderman Nichols. Thank you, Mayor. I move to the approval of R21-2020, a resolution approving a property tax refund for 724 Nicolet Boulevard in the amount of $314.23. Second. There's a motion and a second by Alderman Ted Grady. Any other discussion? Resolution. We should have a roll call vote. Oh, Alderman Nichols, did you have something else? Yes, thank you. Um, Director Sassman, uh, for the benefit of those listening, can you um, explain what's happening here? I sure can. Um, this particular property at Nicolet Boulevard um, was incorrectly charged for about 0.68 um, acres. So this refund is to reimburse them for taxes that they already paid. And that correction has since been made in our GIS system as well as our tax system. Thank you for that. And I just want to extend a thank you to the city attorney and the assessor for working with this property owner. And they've been paying this extra amount for quite some time. And thanks to the work of those involved, we're able to come to um, an agreement um, for the current year. Thank you. Okay, seeing no further discussion, if we could have a roll call vote, please. I have my hand up, Mayor. You took it down and then I, okay, it's down I, again. I, I, thank you, Mayor. Just real quick. <laughs> thank you. Um, I appreciate I appreciate the the refund of that money. I guess I'm just wondering if it was measured wrong this last year. It must have been measured wrong the last seven, eight years or so, however long they've owned the house. How come they don't get the refund back for previous years, just this one year? Their lot just didn't grow now. I'll wait for an answer. Thank you. Alderman Taylor? No? Did you have something, James? I think the responsibility is on the homeowner that you're, you're, you're supposed to, well, I was talking about the, 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 the prop, your property, it's up to you to make sure that everything's correct on it. And that's why the city doesn't have to go back year after year after year and correct the problem. Thank you. Kirby also said statute of limitations at some point as well. Okay, thank you. Yes. Sure. Okay, seeing no one else, if we could have a roll call vote, please. Alderman Tom Grady. Aye. Alderman Ted Grady. Aye. Alderman Rapella. Aye. Alderman Nichols. Aye. Alderman Taylor. Aye. Alderman Sevenick. Aye. Alderman Langdon. Aye. Alderman Schmidt. Aye. Motion carries 8 0. Item 2 is an ordinance to provide for COVID 19 temporary outdoor seating areas. And I did receive a call from the city of Nina that they had this on their agenda last week. And Dean asked, the mayor asked me if I wish to put this on our agenda as well so that we would have the same opportunity for both communities. I did. I had previously asked some of our uh, restaurant owners if they would be interested in something like this. All of them said maybe it might be nice, but they did not see a, a compelling need or a desperate need to do something like this. So this would make us similar to our neighbors, Oshkosh and Nina. Um, it's not something that was necessarily requested by any of our businesses here in Menasha though. So depending on what the council's thoughts are, um, I can go either way on this. I just wanted to get it out there so that if one of you knew of someone that this was important to, that we at least got a chance to discuss it. Alderman Sevenick. Thank you, Mayor. Um, by the way, you, if the council remembers, someone called me during our um, meeting here. Uh, it was surprisingly, it was Sandra Taylor, 
and she yeah. said she was trying to um, be a part of that discussion earlier um, for people from the gallery to, to speak and she didn't have an opportunity. And she is opposed to this ordinance, but I think most of us might know that because we did receive a communication from her. Mm -hmm. um, I think that the ordinance that we have, uh, it's something that Alderman Taylor and myself have worked on in the past to provide additional areas for restaurants and even and bars to be able to um, have this. We already have pretty much this in place, especially in the downtown area. Um, I'm afraid that if we open up this even further with this particular ordinance, although I believe you have a sunset clause in this, um, could actually lead to more problems. So uh, I'm not gonna be supportive of this. Uh, I, I understand its intentions and its goodwill, but um, I think it's just gonna be more trouble for us down the road. And um, I don't think the restaurants have been asking us for this. Uh, like I said, it, it, Alderman Taylor and I, we put this together in the past. Actually, we had to fight very hard to get it. In fact, I don't think it passed the first time around. So. We couldn't even get a sandwich board put in the downtown in the past. So I think what we have now works well, and um, I, I'm not going to support this if anyone makes a, a motion. I'm, I, I think we should just pass on it. Thank you. Alderman Grady. Thank you, Mayor. Um, yes, Council President Stan, I agree with you totally on this, mainly because I can see it in a downtown area, but Menasha is an older city and has a lot of neighborhood bars. And to have something outside, where people can't get to sleep and the noise is louder and louder. I know there's a sunset clause, but I too would rather not uh, support this at this time. Alderman Taylor. Over 20 years, Alderman Seven. Uh, worked on a lot of these ordinances and it was very new to the public and like you said uh, uh, some of these things didn't pass right away and uh, uh, this ordinance has been serving the city very well for many years now and we do isolate uh, bars that are in commercial or industrial area and those that are in residential areas and uh, not only would we want to ask the restaurants if they want it, we would want to ask the homeowner if they want this expanded next to them. And also uh, it creates, if they're going to use their parking lots and things, it creates more on-street parks in front of the residential homes. So our ordinance has served Manesha very well and it, it, it differentiates between uh, the restaurants that can't have it and the, and the bars that can't have it and the bars that can't have it. And it has served the community very well. Thank you. Alderman Nichols. Thank you, Mayor. I agree with everything that's been said by my colleagues on this matter. Thank you. So I think we can move on to the next item, correct? Correct. 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 So the item M is appointments. The first item is the appointment of Haley Motter as a city clerk. Does anyone have a motion? Alderman Sevenick? Or actually Alderman Grady, probably we should. Alderman Grady, yeah. Thank you. Um, at this time, I'd like to move forward to the council, the appointment of Haley Mater as city clerk for the term of 27 to 2020 through 430 of 2021. Second. Second. And I'm guessing that includes with the requirement that she achieves her certification. Yeah. That is correct. It's written on there. Yeah. Yep. yep. So there's a and motion. A second. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Is there a no? 
Was, was there a no? I can take a roll call if there was a no. Okay, the ayes have it. Item two and three are reappointments to the library board. Is there a motion? Alderman Sevenick. Thank you, Mayor. At this time, um, I'd like to make a motion to uh, for your appointments of both individuals to the library board for the term of 6 one to 6 of uh, David Schwerbel and Christina Turner. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any discussion? Turner. Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Item O is public comments and any matter listed on the agenda. Is there anyone? Uh, Director McKitty has something that she'd like to add to the earlier comments regarding COVID-19. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just wanted to mention that there was a question about the city cases, um, the metrics that we use. What we're looking for, I want to clarify what we're looking for is we want to see a downward trajectory of positive tests as a percent of the total tests within a 14 day period. And so we have been, you know, slowly ramping up and in some air, in some days we'll take a dip, but what we're looking for um, and I believe this was um, Alderman Langton's question. What we're looking for is for that sustained decrease in the number of uh, cases, positive cases. So what we'll do is um, obviously we have metrics from the day that this started back in March. And what we can do is put together some charts for your use next time. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Matthew. You're welcome. I do not see anyone else from the public who wishes to comment. Seeing no one, is there a motion to adjourn? Thank you, Mayor. Um, if we could, I'd like uh, it to be noted that uh, that Haley. Uh, was uh, appointed unanimously by the city council. And with that, um, I'll move to adjourn. Second. Motion is second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you.